Good morning children. Today I Tanya Mahajan have brought you the online learning and understanding of your next poem taken from your textbook Beehives. So our next poem is No Men Are Foreign which is written by James Kirkup. Children, the title of the poem itself describes that the poem is bringing forth the factual concept that all men are same and are equal in this world. All are human beings sharing equally all the natural resources and hence must live like brothers and sisters. So before understanding the poem, let's have a brief introduction of the poet. James Kirkup was an English poet, translator and travel writer who was born on 23rd April 1918 and died on 10th May 2009. He wrote over 30 books, including autobiographies, novels and plays. He wrote under many pen names including James Falconer, Aditya Jha, Andrew James, etc. He became a Fellow of the Royal Society of Literature in 1962. His skilled writing of Heiko and Tanka is acknowledged internationally. Children, here I would like to tell you what is a pen name. Pen name is a pseudonym or a fictitious name adopted by an author and he uses this name in his piece of work in place of his real name. Secondly, I would like to tell you about Haiku and Tanka. Haiku and Tanka, they both are the Japanese poems. Haiku is a specific type of Japanese poem typically written on the subject of nature. On the other hand, Tanka is most commonly written as expressions of gratitude, love or self-reflection. So before I begin the text of the poem and its explanation, I would like you all to give your utmost attention to this meaningful quote. The quote goes like this, You may call for peace as loudly as you wish, but where there is no brotherhood, there can in the end be no peace. So this quote really focuses and defines the need of maintaining universal brotherhood and if we are really looking forward to have a peaceful planet to live upon, we should live in peace and harmony with the other people of the other countries and we should maintain the universal brotherhood. So let's have the text of the poem and its explanation. Stanza 1 of the poem goes like this. Remember, no men are strange, no country is foreign. Beneath all uniforms, a single body breathes like ours. The land our brother walk upon is earth like this in which we all shall lie. Here the poet is telling us to remember that no man is different or unknown to us and no country is a foreign one. All of us live upon the same earth. Whatever different kind of dress we wear, it is a human being that is alive and breathing under every dress. The land we walk upon and the earth we live on is equally shared by all of us and it is within the depths of this earth that all of us will lie after we die. Stanza 2 They too aware of sun and air and water are fed by peaceful harvest, by wars long winter starved, their hands are ours, and in their lines we read a labor not different from our own. Here the poet refers to the similarities between the people he belongs to and the people from other countries. By they, he talks of people who belong to other countries. They too are aware of sun and air and water, which is same to all on the earth and shared by everyone. When there is no war, we all do farming and enjoy the yields of the harvest peacefully. In the same way, during wars and winters, we all starve. He further conveys that they too have the same hands and work the same way as we do. He suggests to his readers that there is no difference among the people belonging to different countries. Stanza 3 Remember, they have eyes like ours that wake, or sleep and strength that can be won by love. In every land is common life, 
that all can recognize and understand. The poet here is reminding us that they have eyes like us, wake up and sleep like us and understand the strength the emotion love has in all our lives. It is the same for them as it is for you and me. He adds that the kind of life they lead is not different from ours and we all recognize this fact and should understand this. We know that life follows a certain pattern which is not different in different parts of the world. It is essentially birth, growth and eventually death of a person. This process is followed everywhere. So then how can one place on earth be foreign to the other? Stanza 4. Let us remember whenever we are told to hate our brothers, it is ourselves that we shall dispossess, betray and condemn. Remember, we who take arms against each other. Here the poet says that we must never allow ourselves to fall prey to the petty prejudices and begin to hate our brothers. For if we do so, the poet feels that it is ourselves whom we are betraying. We are doing injustice to our own brothers and sisters and we will be blamed for our own actions. We will be held responsible for destroying the peace and harmony around us. We are destroying the very essence of peaceful existence which is the detrimental for life itself. Stanza 5 It is the human earth that we defile. Our hells of fire and dust outrage the innocence of air that is everywhere our own. Remember, no men are foreign and no countries strange. Here the poet says that when we take arms against each other, we are destroying the earth. We are polluting the earth that is for everyone to live on cordially as well as peacefully. Hatred, prejudices, war and killing release the dirt of thoughts, words and actions into the air. We breathe in and destroy its purity. It is time, therefore, that we realize that no one is a foreigner to the other. We live in the same space, the earth and we need to recognize this fact and have to learn to live and let live others. The world is theirs as much as it is mine and yours. So if I and you can live here, what should prevent them from living here in peace and harmony? Children, I hope you understood the explanation of the text which is given. Now let's move on to the poetic devices. Following are the poetic devices which are used in the poem. The first poetic device is alliteration. I hope you know what is alliteration. Alliteration is the repetition of consonant sounds in a line or grouping of words. I have jotted down few examples. The first one is a single body breathes. There is the repetition of consonant sound B. Or sleep in strength. There is the repetition of consonant sound S. Whenever we are told, there is a repetition of consonant sound W. Next poetic device is simile. Simile is the comparison between two unlike things by using the words like or as. The first example is a single body breathes like ours and they have eyes like ours. Next poetic device is metaphor. As you all know that metaphor is an implied comparison. And here the three examples I have quoted. First is wars long winter starved. Here the starvation experienced during an unproductive and harsh winters describes the want and hunger faced during wartime. Both these conditions lead to ultimate destruction. The second example is beneath all uniforms a single body breathes. Here uniform stands for military forces that every country have of its own. These uniforms may be different in color or shape or designs, but the people that are donning them belong to the same earth. The third example is our hells of fire and dust. Here the poet compares war with hells that only pollute the earth and bring sufferings to its people. Next poetic device or literary device is transferred epithet. This literary device is used when emotion is attributed to a non-living thing after being displaced from a living being. In this poem, the poet uses this device in sixth line. 
when he writes the phrase peaceful harvest it is not the harvest themselves that are peaceful but peaceful social and political conditions that prevent a shortage of crops and famine and make harvest possible next poetic device is apostrophe this literary device is used when a poet addresses his poem to an absent audience here in this poem the poet is seen giving advice directly to his readers let's talk about the form and structure of the poem this poem is written in free verse therefore there is no set rhyme scheme in the poem the poem on the whole is written in 20 lines divided into five quatrains though divided into stanzas the poet's use of enjambed sentences make the lines and meaning run between them all stanzas are streamlined to convey the central idea of universal brotherhood let's have the theme of the poem the poem is an ardent appeal on the poet's part to rid our hearts of xenophobia and embrace the unity of man as a whole the poet keeps on insisting on the one theme that is equality of mankind despite all the man made differences of color race nationality and faith he proposes all men and women to be brothers and sisters let us work for the unity and prosperity of all lands and its people children here i would like to tell you what is xenophobia xenophobia is a feeling of dislike or hostility that one shows against the people from other countries so finally in the end i would like to conclude with martin luther king's junior's quotes we must learn to live together as brothers or perish together as fools thank you i hope you understood the chapter and i hope you understood that this is the high time that we need to spread love among each other need to live in unity as well as to get ourselves rid of all the discrimination on the basis of color religion caste or country and live with peace and integrity thank you and have a wonderful day to you all